We've all been there. You're looking at a problem and you have no idea what to do to solve it. All your usual approaches don't seem to even make sense. And there are new definitions or arguments that just seem to confuse things further. You can't move forward on your own. So you do the only thing that makes sense. You Google the answers online. You read the answer and eventually everything clicks. It makes sense. You can do that problem now and you have made sure that you will never internalize the actual lesson of the problems. Struggling in mathematics is perfectly natural. In fact, it's a good thing because that means that there's something that you understand is not clicking and knowing that there's a hole there is very good because some people just run with it and have no clue. And so here, listen to a big mathematician from the 20th century, Paul Helmholtz, talk about his frustrations with the foundations of calculus. Here, listen to here. It was silly stuff, calculus that mathematicians look down on and sneer at nowadays about what do epsilons and deltas mean and the answer is it's easy stuff but it wasn't easy for me at all it was a total mystery and then suddenly I was with my friend Warren Ambrose and one thing I said suddenly rang through I understood not the epsilons and the deltas and the symbols but the idea and it, it was a major step and suddenly I saw what all these other guys Dube and Ambrose and so on had been talking about. And at that minute, for what it's worth, I became a mathematician. So here's what's really interesting about this. So calculus itself wasn't even on good foundation until the late 19th century. And that was with Cauchy and Weierstrass coming along and giving the sort of epsilon delta definitions that led to a solid foundation. In fact, people in the 18th century would talk about how calculus was like a religion for mathematicians. Like there, there was no reason to think that it should really work. And so it wasn't until the you know late 19th century that you started to see it start to come together. And so he's talking about doing this in the 1930s. This is just, you know, like maybe 30 years after calculus got solid foundations. And so he's talking about how he's struggling to understand it. And then he kept working at it and he kept working at it until it finally clicked when he was having a conversation with somebody. And he said that when it clicked, that's when he became a mathematician. All right, so let's get back to what I was saying never internalize the actual lesson of the problems. You have studied wrong, and as you have done this over and over again, you have absolutely crippled yourself. And what level of mathematics or problem solving am I talking about? High school, college, PhD programs? I'm talking about all of them. I have seen this happen to everyone, and I have fallen victim to it as well from time to time when I'm not being patient with myself. I had friends in college that somehow got their hands on a solutions manual for the class. They lived by it, studied it every day, and then whenever they confronted something new or unexpected, they had no idea how to move forward. The solutions to them were a list of items memorized and regurgitated on an exam. If you look at the Hilbert Space Problems book, you can see in the structure that Paul Halmos doesn't want you to see any of the answers without really trying. There is not only a problem section separated from the solution section, there's also a whole hint section where he wants you to go first before consulting the answers. Math Stack Exchange has a policy against giving people answers even though they know it happens anyways. They insist that, especially for homework problems, you only give someone a hint as to how to solve a problem. Sure, we all need that help now and again, but it's better to have someone nudge you in the right direction than give you the answer outright. The higher you go, the more detrimental this can be. I knew people that had their friends solve all the problems for them, and they said it was okay because they worked until they understood the solutions themselves. These same people went on to fail their classes and their PhD exams. The answers to the problems are not the point of solving the problems. No one cares that the maximum value of the function x squared times one minus x cubed is at 0 0.04. It's more abstract than that. The point is to learn the method of how to solve the problem and to understand what the methodology can do for you in future problems. If someone asks you to show the set of points one over n is not compact, then if you go find the answer to the problem, you aren't going to have the aha moment that comes with constructing an open cover that doesn't have a finite subcover. No one really cares that 1 over n is not compact. What is it that they say? It's about the journey and not the destination? Halmos in his preface says the following. The only way to learn mathematics is to do mathematics. 
the right way to read mathematics is first to read the definitions of the concepts and the statements of the theorems, and then putting the book aside to try to discover the appropriate proofs. If the theorems are not trivial, then the attempts may fail but it is likely to be instructive just the same. To the passive reader, a routine computation and a miracle of ingenuity come with equal ease. And later, when he must depend on himself, he will find that they went as easily as they came. The active reader who has found out what does not work is in a much better position to understand the reason for the success of the author's method and later to find the answers that are not in the book. It's important when you confront a new problem to try something, anything, even if it's stupid. You need to get your brain thinking about the problem. Some problems might take you hours, days, or in some cases weeks to come up with a solution on your own. You have to be patient with yourself and try to come up with the right answer or a good wrong answer. If you are really stumped on a problem, go back through the section and read the theorems, read the examples, read the proofs, or study the computations. Come back and see what will fit. If nothing fits, then try some other strategies. Try checking edge or extreme cases. Look at what happens when you turn off a bit of the hypothesis. Can you find a counterexample to this theorem? And why isn't it actually a counterexample? There are all sorts of horrible approaches to problems that will teach you better than reading one correct approach. If after a couple of days of working on a problem you still cannot get something out of it, then talk to your professor or tutor or another student and ask them for a hint. Sometimes you still need to ask for a solution eventually, and that's fine, but you need to earn it. Even if you have solved the problem, don't look at the solution yet. You need to learn how to see when you are right. Study your solution and go through line by line to see if something can be off. This will help your intuition tremendously. Then, once you are satisfied that you have a correct solution, then go look it up. You might be wrong, but you got the important lesson out of the problem, and those are the real lessons of the problem sets. In any case, I hope this helps you come up with an approach to studying that works better for you. These are all hard lessons learned over years of doing and teaching mathematics, and I hope that a few words from me might help you achieve some great things in the future. Maybe that's me thinking a bit too much myself, but I hope you do well all the same. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and a comment. I love hearing from you. And take care. I hope you have a great day.